Hello, and welcome to another ARM Software Developer Breakdown. My name is Robert Wolf, and in this video, we are once again joined by Valentin Viano, Product Manager from Canonical, to continue building out his Innovation Lab demo. If you missed any of the previous parts to this series, please cruise on down to the description and find the part that you are on. Valentin, in the last video, you performed a remote deployment of a VM running on your LXD cluster with VS Code. What do you have in store for us today? Yes, yeah, so we have covered the virtualization layer of the microcloud stack with LXD, and we were able to create virtual machines. And now we're going to use this capability to create some Unix containers that are going to be nodes for microcades. And then we will have a high available self-healing installation of Kubernetes thanks to microcades that we will be using to do some Kubernetes deployments. So let's head into the demo. So again, just to recap what we already have configured. We do have a cluster configured with four nodes that are our four Raspberry Pis. Uh, I've cleaned it from the virtual machine that we created in the previous video to have a clean cluster. And now we're going to uh, install some Kubernetes nodes. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use the documentation that you can find on microcase.io, and I'm just going to do a, a follow along. Um, this is the microcase docs slash leaksd going to be put in the description. You see that you first start with installing LixD and configuring it so that we have already done. Uh, we are going to configure a profile for microcades because it needs some specific uh, requirements that uh, are going to be configured through a profile. Uh, this is related to configuration and storage. OK, so I'm going to use the predefined profile that you can find on the documentation that, that is all made for you. And I'm going to input it to the Lixi command line to create and configure this uh, microcades profile. OK, so now that I've do done that, I'm just going to do some uh, quick cleanup as the documentation recommends. And that's it. I've configured the profile. And now what's left to do is to create some containers, some nodes for our cluster. I'm going to be creating four of them, one per uh, per physical node. Just to make it easier, I'm going to rename them work1, work2, and uh, until 4. So the first time you launch Linux, Linux container, as we had previously with the virtual machine, it's going to take a bit longer because it has to download the image that is different from the virtual machine one and to uh, initialize it from the first time. And then the second and the third and the fourth node are going to be quicker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch them in parallel. And everything I'm going to do on the work one, I'm going to be doing it on the three other nodes as well. So for that, I'm just going to open a bunch of terminals and to copy paste all the command lines. So while this is our launching, you might be wondering why four nodes. Uh, that's basically because we want a highly available installation. So for that, we need at least three nodes. But what is going to happen if we lose one is that we won't have any more the high available installation. So that's why four is uh, the perfect number in this case, because even if I lose one node, I'm going to still have this uh, high available configuration. OK, we see that we do have some errors. Maybe I've launched too much task in uh, parallel here. And it seems that the storage layer is complaining. OK. Good, so the first node already has started. I'm going to use, oops, let's see to see what's in the cluster now. You see that our four workers are uh, either running or uh, launching. And we're going to do the first example on the first one. So what's next is to install the snap microcades. So for that, we're going to use the Lixi exec command line and do a pseudo snap install microcades using the classic confinement. So this is Lixi exec worker one and uh, snap install microcades. So you see that always happens to me. Uh, the first time, if you don't wait long enough, you're going to have it too early for operation. That's not a problem. Just going to wait a few seconds here and launch the command again. As I said, I'm going to do that for the four nodes in a parallel. So let's do it. OK, so now that we have the microcade snap installed, we're going to configure microcades quickly to 
enable uh, DNS and storage that, that we're gonna require later. So let's do microkits enable DNS storage. And again, do that on the four nodes. Okay, so I just realized that I missed some part of the documentation. That's nothing too bad. Just heading back to the documentation, you see that we need to configure some app armor profile for it to get back every time the container reboots. So I'm just gonna do that quickly for the four nodes. Uh, this is basically copy and paste as it's already configured for us in the documentation. Okay, so now that's done, that's a lot of configuration that we could automate through scripting, but that would be defeating the purpose of uh, going step by step through the demo. So let's exec on the first node, a microcades.status, and we are gonna wait for microcades to be ready. So we're gonna say dash dash dot wait, again, dash dash wait dash ready. Okay, and now we have our first node running. Uh, which is great. What we're gonna do now is that we're gonna cluster together all the four uh, machines. So for that, we're gonna need some more configuration. Just like let's, let's use Lixilist to see what the IP address is of all the nodes. We're gonna need it because I don't have some DNS configuration on my network. So we're gonna need to tell them what the, the IP address is of all the other nodes. So for that, let's just quickly edit the etc hosts file on each of them. So let's do open a shell on work one. I'm gonna go into the ETC hosts and then put everything I need. So this is work one. Again, this could be better with a, with a better network configuration. I'm realizing I'm copy pasting the same thing, which isn't very useful. Okay. And the last one is 16, it's for work four. Just gonna make it easier for me. All right, so now we're just gonna add all the nodes together to form a cluster. And for that, I'm gonna use the comment add node, so that's on the first one, for example, uh, let's say add node. And this is gonna give me another comment that I can just run on another node to join the cluster with a token. So let's do that. Work two is gonna join with uh, this comment. So you see it's contacting the cluster with its IP address and I'm gonna do that on all the other nodes as well and wait for it to cluster together. So let's do that. Okay, so let's see how many nodes we have in the cluster now and if they have successfully joined. So we do have the four nodes clustered together with microcades. Uh, you can see with the kube control get nodes that we have all of them clustered together. I can do a lixi exec on one of the workers and say microcades uh, dot status to see that they are all running together. I'm gonna shell onto uh, the machine to make sure that I get the output. Okay, microcades dot status. So you see that microcades is running. It is high available because it has at least three nodes. Uh, three of them have been designated as master nodes. So that's the, the three. And they have a copy of the database. So this is a high available configuration. This, was, this one is in standby. So if one of the master nodes uh, just goes down, this one is gonna be promoted master and get a copy of the database. What we can quickly do now to uh, finish this part of the demo is to uh, deploy an image there. We're gonna use one of Canonical's uh, images so that we are publishing under the Ubuntu namespace on Looker Hub. That's a set of uh, 
of secure and hardened images that have this LTS commitment that we are doing for the baseless and we are not doing it for some open source applications such as Redis, for example. So let's go take this one. If you jump to the end of the documentation, you get a deploy with Kubernetes with everything you need to do it. Uh, so just let's do that quickly. I'm gonna get some config file that I need for the deployment. So one is the Redis conf, which is Redis configuration, and the other is uh, the Kubernetes deployment file. So let's do that. And then you see you have to create a config map and to apply it to the cluster. Uh, so and that. All right, so now that the deployment is uh, applied, we can do a kubectl kubes control get all. And we see that we have the pod that is container creating, you know, downloading the, the image from Docker Hub, and the deployment is almost ready. We can watch that happening. Oops, we can do watch. And you see that the pod is running, the service uh, is up, and deployment is ready one on one. That's uh, all good. So that's all we've done today in this part of the demo. We have set up uh, four nodes for microgates running in uh, Linux containers on top of the LixD fertilization layer. And we have clustered together these uh, four nodes of microgates in a high available configuration. So now that we are deploying uh, some, some workloads on them, the database for microgates uh, for Kubernetes is replicated at least three times. So any node can go down at any time and we are safe. And that's what we're gonna see in the next video. Uh, just a, a cluster of failure simulation. Very awesome, Valentin. Thank you so much for sharing all of this so far. Complex and fun. Uh, I already am looking forward to the next part of this series. Now, if you haven't already liked the video, smash that like button, head on over to the ARM Software Developers homepage, follow our channel, and we look forward to seeing you in the next ARM Software Developer Breakdown.